What's happening YouTube? Kite Planet here or Kite if you're like that. Some people aren't like that, but I'm like that. It's been a minute y'all since I've done a power system crossover video. I really like these videos. I've been sitting on a few of them. I've been fine tuning and workshopping a couple of them and I think this one's ready to deliver. Like I, I said before in these videos, I make so many of these that I one day want to write, be a light novel or my own manga, and I need to save some abilities for my character. So I often come up with abilities that I don't really want to share, but I, sh I end up sharing them later and just nitpick the ones that I think really I should save for myself. But yeah, I think these, I like these videos and I think they could really make me popular if I keep doing them. So I'm going to keep doing them. All right. Now, today, I'm going to be giving, oh, 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 wait, 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 before I get into the video, October, Hunter x Hunter is coming back in serialization week by week, I guess, or whatever, but I'm going to re be reviewing that chapter by chapter, so if you want to see that done by yours truly, subscribe so you can be around for that. I will be reviewing Hunter x Hunter each chapter, and we'll do a bunch of videos on each chapter because you know how much information they give in those Hunter x Hunter chapters especially since the start of the uh, Succession War arc, and the Black Whale. A lot of information. So we, if you want to see that stuff, subscribe. All right, now let's get into it. So today we're going to be giving Baki Hanma from Baki a Nin ability. Yes, it's going to be pretty fun. Now, you may think this ability I create is a bit simple, but you'll understand as I keep talking about it once you hear you'll be like, all right, shh, this is pretty ridiculous. I don't, I don't know. But you know how I get down if you've seen these videos before. So the first step in giving someone a Nin ability is deciding what their Nin affinity is going to be. Most people, well, I don't even want to say most people because I'm really the only person that consistently creates Nin abilities for characters outside of the Hunter Hunter verse. So I would say that if people did this, they would probably either strictly adhere to Hisoka's Nen personality test when giving Nen affinities or they just create their own. I would like to do a mix of both. A little bit of my own judgment, my gut feeling, and then also base it a little bit off the personality quiz because it is the content. It's the canon way to decide it. Even though can canonically, they said it's not really that accurate. It's not 100% accurate at least. So... After thinking about it a while, I decided to make Baki a transmuter. Transmutation. Why? Because I think he has a similar behavior and personality to Kilua, who's also a transmuter. Yeah, he's. I think Baki's whimsical a little bit in his own little nonchalant way. He makes little jokes and when he's fighting and he looks down on people kind of arrogantly. Kilua does the same thing. So yeah, they're different. I'm not trying to say they're the same character by any means but they do have similar characteristics and behavior patterns. So I think transmutation fits perfectly for Baki. I also didn't want to go straight enhancer because, I mean, come on, bro, that's boring. With that, that, with that out of the way, let's get into the ability. First, I'm gonna tell you the name of the ability. Then I'm gonna tell you what the ability does, how the ability does what it does, then the process. And then after that, we'll get to the conditions and finally the restrictions. So that's the outline of the video. Hope that makes sense. So what's the name of the ability? Let's keep it simple. Something that reflects the ability but doesn't give away too much. I decided on combat shadow. Baki's a martial artist. We had to talk about combat. And then the shadow part, combat shadow, could really give you an inkling of an idea as to what this ability could possibly be little easter egg for you what does combat shadow do well combat shadow allows baki to change his aura into the shape of various beasts at the same time he is also able to access the characteristics of the creature he's changed his aura into pretty cool how does baki do this right that was just a brief explanation he can change his aura into the shape of various beasts we all know there are a variety of creatures in hunter hunter some similar to how they are on Earth, and some that are way too fantastical to exist in real life. So he can pick from the litter, 
right? Because we know Baki, humans aren't the strongest creatures in Hunter x Hunter. Baki seeks the strongest. If he was in Hunter x Hunter, he would study the beast to see how they got so strong and see if he can take any techniques from them. That's just who he is. No really arguing that. Now, how does this work? So Baki takes the fighting stance, a fighting stance that mimics the beast natural form that looks like the beast and his aura takes the shape of that beast so he has to take a stance right and once that we've seen him do this before in his own series in his own manga in his own anime he when he was fighting pickle he took the stance of the triceratops so this isn't this isn't a foreign concept when it comes to baki i tried to keep some things true to who baki is so a fighting stance is perfectly basing your an inability off a fighting stance I think that is there's no better way to create an inability for Baki and one that would actually work and function, not just some ridiculous. If I try to give him freaking water powers or mind control or brain, it's ridiculous fighting stance. That's what we're gonna do. All right. So before we get to the process, because the process is important, obviously, I want to take a shot in the dark. Really come out of left field with this. If you're a true, a tried and true Baki avid Baki enjoyer, I don't know how you're going to feel about what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it anyways because I think it's really cool and I like it. So you know how Baki has all the scars over his body, right? Pretty, that's a pretty, you know, noticeable, it's a unique and notorious characteristic of Baki's character, all the scars over his body because he's always fighting with his shirt off and the short shorts on. So that's all you see. Well, I decided that we're going to replace those scars with Divine Script from Nin. Yes, we're going to change that to Divine Script. Because I think Divine Script, being what it is, if you don't know what it is, well, we all really don't know what it is because it's only been shown very few times. Basically, the gist of what it does is it amplifies your ability to use your Hatsu or Nin in general. It allows you to do things you normally wouldn't be able to do. So the one time we saw in the anime, I think it was one of Tezgera's guys or one of Razor's guys. But they were in a boxing ring and he was boxing and the entire floor of the ring was covered in divine script. I'll put a picture up of it so you can see. Well, this allowed him to basically use a remote punch, kind of like Leorio's remote punch, and get a knockout when he really shouldn't have. It, it, it teleported his punch. And so normally he wouldn't be able to do that. He didn't have a good enough mastery over Nen to accomplish a Hatsu like that. You can tell he's just a grunt when that's an elite technique. Divine Script allowed him to achieve it because it amplified everything around it. So yeah, we're going to say not that Baki needs Divine Script to accomplish his Hatsu because he doesn't. We all know Baki's meticulous in everything that he does. So if he were to have Nen he would probably be one of the best Nin users in the series, guaranteed. If we if we uh, kind of liken him to any character in the series, it'd probably be Netero. We know Netero went and mastered the 10,000 punches of gratitude. Baki would kind of be in that realm. Maybe not to that extreme extent, but martial artists would have an easier time mastering Nin. I think that's not something that's stated in Hunter x Hunter, but it's obvious. Martial artists are better at mastering it so baki would be able to do it now let's get to the process so he has divine script tattoos all over his body baki's now tatted every every scar replaced that with the tendril of divine script pretty cool i think let's get to the process by taking an extremely precise stance the divine script all over his body recognizes the intended form along with the mental belief and projection of seeing that um, beast in Baki's mind, his aura then begins to take the shape and become the creature. And the divine script allows it to really grasp what the creature is, and that's how he gets the characteristics of it, not just the form of it. Because taking the form of it wouldn't be, I mean, that'd be broken. Like if he turned into an elephant, his aura turned into the shape of an elephant, and he charged it, it would be an, an elephant with aura, which would be massively just destructive but just that is not really enough he can take characteristics and fight with certain characteristics so an example of that would be if what's a famous stance in just for Mar the crane stance 
made famous by Karate Kid, where mm, that thing. What Baki were to do the crane stance and mimic it perfectly, like we know he could since he's a martial artist, his aura would change into the form of a crane. Cranes can fly, so Baki would be able to achieve flight, something not very common in Hunter Hunter at all. I think Subone can do it. She turns into some sort of aircraft, and even her, I don't even think she can fly on her own. She needs an outside source of aura to fuel her, so that's a bit of a tentative case on flight. But the other people are chimera ants. They're not even the same species. They're not even human. So you have the royal guards of Poof and Yuppie that can fly. Pito, I don't think, can fly. And Merum can fly. Flutter can fly. And then I think all, you know, insect or bird-esque ants could probably achieve flight. There's not that many of them. But regardless, there I may have missed some people. Maybe. I don't even think I have. But regardless, there are a handful of people that can fly. In Hunter x Hunter, it's a, it's a very unique skill, and it would be broken if you had it. Baki can do that if he takes the form of a crane. And it, let's say he flew up because he has wings, and his aura is shaped wings. Wings have feathers. What if he wanted to launch spiked aura feathers at you? And if you didn't block yourself or protect yourself with aura properly, it would rip holes through you, and you'd die instantly. So getting hit by that's really dangerous. And he could do that because emission is not that far removed from transmutation on the diagram of Nin and what Nin affinities are. I believe enhancements at the top and then you have um, transmutation. Well, if he can use 80% of enhancement, then he should be able to use 60% emission. I think 60% mastery of emission or your 100% mastery of 60% is enough to shoot feather shaped or or just spike shaped auras at people of nin just spike shaped it, it, it's not that fine tuned and controlled it's not to that effect but this is something that has been done more with emission if you think about zeno who molds his aura into the shape of a dragon but he can also detach it from himself and it maintains the same strength then you get things like that flying dragon that him and netter were riding on and then ultimately led to the move dragon dive which was in one of the most destructive techniques in the series maybe it might be the most destructive one we've seen to be honest i don't know something that could really cover that area and do that much damage i don't remember it's slipping my mind right now but yeah, so it's, this is not a ridiculous technique. Let's get to the conditions because it's very important. We need to know this ability seems like anybody be able to do it. Like a martial, any other martial artist should be able to form their aura into an animal and take its characteristics. Well, obviously I set it apart by the divine script, but if we take that out of the equation, you might be right. But what also separates them with the conditions is you must have to take a perfect stance. Baki can do that. Other martial arts can do that. What separates Baki is the other condition of having to be able to per picture the beast. You must imagine it perfectly. And Baki is heralded for his, uh, his image training. When he imagined fighting Mike Tyson, he was getting his ass beat. You know how good you have to be at creating an image out of nothing with your eyes wide open? So much so that you're losing the fight. And then when he pictured the praying mantis and then he lost to it a bunch of times you know how elite that is so that's what separates baki apart from other martial artists that would attempt this and i don't even know if they could attempt this because you know every hatsu is unique you can't really copy it i would say that minor spoiler here so if you haven't read the manga i'll put a timestamp of what you can skip to so pause it now look at the timestamp skip but for those who have read the manga copying ability is not that far it's not ridiculous anymore because we've seen jing freaks do it now one of two options are possible did he copy it because his hatsu is copying stuff or did he copy it because he has such great mastery over nin that he knows how everyone's abilities work if he gets hit by it he can understand it but once again that sort of be like a copy ability is the ability and once i experience a technique i can use it or does he just understand aura that much? That opens up a door that we need to address sooner or later. So other martial artists, other elite Nin users will be able to copy this technique if 
it weren't for the fact that it requires intense mental image training, which only Baki would have. Like only Kilua has that, or and his family has the resistance to electricity. No other person in the world could do that except for Azoldic. So it's that case where you have to be a special person to use this ability. And it takes, it's even hard to shape your aura into the form of an animal in the first place. Remember, Bisky is an elite Nin user. Like, she has, her ability may not be that cool or it's not really combat useful, but she is a very good Nin user. She's even able to shape her Nin into the form of numbers, which Kilua and Gon, who are Nin geniuses, one in 10 million or whatever they were stated to be. It took them months to get even a fraction of the mastery that Bisky has with proportioning her aura to different parts of her body. So imagine having to do that and then shape it into the form of an animal. Very difficult. So this ability is not as simple as you may think. But like I said, access to animals is broken. All the characteristics you could choose from, which leads me to the restriction because we have to set a restriction on this ability because... Letting them access all types of creatures would just be ridiculous. I don't think anyone would be able to stop it, and I'll tell you why. So the restriction is creatures must be vertebrates. You cannot use invertebrates. You can't use insects, crustaceans, uh, what else? Arachnids. Like, none of those things. Why? Because if you know what I know, as we all know, if that makes sense, well, insects are sort of superhuman. They possess what we would consider superpowers. Some of them can run if you purported like if you change the proportions and size those animals up, like they'd be running like 300 miles an hour. Animals, the insects up, they'd be running like 300 miles an hour, which is impossible for humans. So, no access to that because if he was able to say the mantis shrimp, if Baki took the form of whatever fighting stance he would use to mimic a mantis shrimp, he would have access to the characteristics of the mantis strip. Not only it's like eyes that are super complex and it has probably like some of the best eyes in the, the animal kingdom, but that punch that is like a 22 caliber bullet or shot. If you scale that up to Baki's five, six frame, add on aura to that, then add on to the, add on with the divine script. Who knows how strong that punch would be? That punch would probably be way stronger than even Ubo Gain's Big Bang Punch shit. Like, it would probably, if he hit Marum with it, it would probably blow one of Marum's limbs off. Honestly, if you scaled that up and added all the stuff with the Divine Script, the fact that it's Nen being infused to it, and we know how much Nen boosts your power of a regular punch, coupled with the fact that it's the characteristics of a Mantis Shrimp or a Pistol Shrimp that it punches that fast, you scale that up, it's going to be like a fucking nuke of a punch. So you can't give Baki something like that because, like I said, he would eventually, if you skim through all the abilities that insects and invertebrates have, there would be something that would be able to beat every single person. And Baki's so smart, and he's, his combat IQ, his battle IQ is so up there that he would eventually you know, begin to start studying these insects and only use invertebrates that have superpowers, and then it would be... It'd be broken. He wouldn't. He'd be able to beat anybody. I guarantee you, there is something in there that could beat Marum. There's a superpower that an insect or any invertebrate has that would probably one shot Marum. So we got a restriction. It has to be a vertebrate. It has to have a spine. So it has to be mammal, reptile, stuff like that. Even an amphibian. I think the frogs have bones. Am I tweaking? Frogs definitely have bones. Yeah, it has. To, even amphibians count too. So yeah, it has to be a vertebrate. Anything outside of that category. Hell no, because he'd be too broken. So, yeah. I think you could think of a lot of ways that Baki could use this. Like, if he if he turned into that Triceratops again or something relative within the Hunter Hunter verse, maybe he would, he would take the stance and his aura would form into these sharp horn tusk things, three of them. And maybe with the Divine Script amplifying it, he doesn't even have to touch you. It just is a, a force, like a, a thrust, and those it'll send, like, bursts of air flying, and it'll hit you sort of like that so who knows how strong and to what extent Baki's like the characteristics can do we just don't know because we don't know all the creatures in the hunter hunter verse imagine if Baki got his his hands on a freaking encyclopedia for monsters in the the dark continent like he would be 
an unstoppable force. So I think this ability is is truly broken, but he has to be able to train and understand the form of the beast he's taking. He has to be able to picture it and all that. So it's not an easy thing. He, he doesn't have an infinite catalog of stuff. There's only so many beasts he could probably mimic. All right, so it's not a completely broken ability. But yeah, that's the video. I think that's a pretty cool ability. Let's go over it one more time. Combat Shadow. He's a transmuter. He transmutes his aura. He changes the quality of his aura to match the characteristics of a beast that he changes the shape of his aura into. So there's the transmutation part of it, if you didn't get that already. But yeah, he does this by having to take a stance, a condition. The stance has to be mimic or has to mimic the animal or creature that he's trying to be. And then the um, he has to be able to picture the beast perfectly. Not just picture it, but fully believe that the stance is that. And then the stance has to be, like, you know in anime they say, that stance has no openings. It has to be a stance to, of that ilk. And us muggles, we don't understand that because we're not martial artists. We will look at a stance like that and be like, there's openings. When in when reality, there's not. So the stance has to be damn near perfect. And he has to be able to picture it. So... Yeah, pretty broken, and the Divine Script tattoos in place of the scars is just a nice chef's kiss to add on top of it and just boost the power to the fucking ceiling. Who knows who he'd be able to freaking smash on with that. We're not doing a Chimera, and by Chimera, we're not doing where he can transform parts of his bodies in different... It has to be one at a time. That's another condition or restriction. You can't do various beasts at one time. Maybe that's a a post-mortem nin ability where if Baki were to die and if he used his uh, aura to somehow bring him back to life, maybe he brings his aura, it takes over and it becomes autonomous and his aura then changes and manipulates him. He's, he's alive, but he doesn't really have control over his aura. It decides when it's fighting and what it wants to turn into. It becomes a, a automaton made of just pure aura with, a person inside of it that really the only thing he can do is really speak when it comes to when he activates that aura he has no control over it so then it would be able to go chimera mode and activate different you know creatures in the same form and same stance that would be pretty broken if he wanted to go the post-mortem nin route but yeah as i said i will be reviewing hunter hunter when it comes in october subscribe if you want to see that and more videos on hunter hunter and yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm interested on what you think of this ability, what I could change, what you would change if you have a better ability, if you would change the name. Let me know. But I will catch you in the next one, guys. Peace.